You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Welcome to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now. All right. Hello, Night Nation. Hello, Orlando. This is Andrew Fagley, and this is Nightline at Night on a new time, a new day, and it is... uh, Kind of the same show. We're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we've just changed times and days. It's all good. Uh, glad to, <laughs> to be here on a Sunday with y'all. We're live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law, assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, or visit protectingvets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. We're also taking your calls, 844-580-9326, 844 844- 580-9326, or you can use the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley, AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter. Roger has the weekend off, and you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. Joining us from the top here is a guy that knows more about uh, what's going on in the world of UCF sports than anyone that I know. Brandon Helwig, UCFSports.com publisher. Brandon, are you there, my friend? Yeah, I am. I am here, Andrew. It is uh, fantastic to be on on this new uh, time time slot for uh, for Nightline at night slash late afternoon. <laughs> I know. I wasn't going to change the name again. That's the whole thing. It's still night. It's PM. So <laughs> it was Nightline the morning after for the people that that know when we were on ESPN 580, and then we came to WDBO, and it was Nightline at night because it was a night spot. Now we're in like kind of the middle. So. Nightline Nightline in the the middle, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not changing it again. There's too much graphic work and all that stuff to do. So, Brandon, my friend, uh, you have been hard at work the last week or so with uh, camp starting. What can you, uh, what, I guess, off the top of your head, what's the, what's the vibe? Yeah, well, you know, camp just got started for UCF last week. Uh, Things kind of got going on, on, on Wednesday and they're out there every single day. Now, you know, we just, we just kind of cover the interviews after practice. Uh, I think we've had a couple opportunities to watch maybe 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning of practice. You know, you really can't take away a whole lot from that time period, just kind of getting a brief glimpse of the guys and seeing who's out there and everything. But, you know, obviously a lot, a lot of excitement and really a, a lot different than, you know, where we were, you know, a year ago with, now, obviously, you know, COVID is still an issue, but, you know, we weren't even allowed anywhere near the practice field this time last year, and we were, everything was on Zoom and all that stuff. So it was good just to kind of get back into more of a normal feel. Uh, UCF had a media day uh, this past uh, Tuesday, which was which is a lot of fun, just kind of seeing guys face-to-face again. Uh, I think the, the guy who kind of stole the show that day was one of the new transfers, uh, defensive end Big Cat Bryant. Uh, one of the players from Auburn who followed Gus, he was talking a lot of, you know, lofty goals and he went to be the best player in the country and just was a real blast to talk to him. So yeah, we're just kind of slowly getting, getting into it. And yeah, I guess a uh, week, week two, uh, we'll, we'll begin for UCF tomorrow. Well, I think that big cat Brian is definitely hopefully going to steal the show on a lot of games. I hope, uh, I'm really looking forward to him making a huge impact, uh, pun intended, uh, you know, this year, especially for the defensive line that was kind of struggling. One name that everybody kind of wonders about, uh, Bentavious Thompson no longer with the team. Have you found out anything more about that? I know that they really hadn't said anything about it. Yeah, you know, I don't have anything confirmed. I mean, I have a few rumors of some things that I don't know if I want to repeat on air, but, you know, I guess the only thing that matters is that he's no longer with the program, so you know, he won't be helping the Knights this fall, which is, it, it's it's a big loss. I mean, we go, you know, UCF goes from, you know, uh, 
basically bringing back zero running backs with with relevant game experience. I know R.J. Harvey is is I guess pretty much the de facto number one running back right now. He was kind of sharing that top spot with Bentavious Thompson this past spring. Um, you know, he saw a very minimal amount of playing time this past season. He's the former quarterback uh, that played at at Virginia. Uh, you know, originally was from Orlando area, played at Edgewater High School, transferred to UCF prior to last season. So, you know, this past year is just trying to him, you know, get acclimated from, you know, quarterback mode to playing running back. And, you know, he's, I've heard a lot of good things, you know, about, about him so far. They have Isaiah Bowser, uh, one of the other transfers from Northwestern. Uh, he just joined the team this summer and a guy that a lot of people expected to make a big impact for running back is another guy that transferred from Auburn, Mark Anthony Richards. Uh, but he's got a little injury issue right now. We're not exactly sure what's going on. He hasn't been practicing yet. Uh, maybe that's something that we're going to talk to Gus this week about to see, you know, what his status is and, and when he may actually join the team for practice. Yeah, well, that that uh, that stuff makes it, you know, with the injuries going around and then, you know, the uncertainty of Bentavious Thompson, obviously, if it's not uncertain anymore, he's just not there. But uh, that definitely, you know, raises some red flags, if you would say, uh, I'm really looking forward and maybe Isaiah Bowser will be used in a different way than maybe we thought he was. I kind of had thought that he would maybe be a fullback H back type kind of a guy. Uh, but you know, at Northwestern for a few years, he's been banged up. So I don't know if he's fully healthy now, but if he is, I mean, he's a really, really big back and, and has some wheels on him. Yeah. He, yeah. He seems like he's, he's 100%, you know, just nearly going, you know, asking players, you know, who's looked good at practice so far. His name has been mentioned a few times and he kind of gives you see if that bigger back that, you know, frankly, you know, Yusuf hasn't had really in this Frost Hypo era the past, you know, few years. You know, Adrian Killens, Otis Anderson, Greg McCray, they really weren't the biggest guys. And so it'll be, you know, a, a pretty nice, you know, bigger back option that they, they UCF just hasn't been able to play with the past few years. Yeah, then we have Johnny Richardson coming back as well, who will be a sophomore this year. Uh, was kind of exciting in the times that we saw him last year, the, although he's a really small guy, so... Uh, that might be a little bit different. Ben, you got something for Brandon here? Yeah, it was just on this topic, and it's just uh, just a name that I haven't heard, um, you know, spoken about in the last year or so. Uh, but he is still listed on the roster. Is is Trillian Coles um, in the mix? Is he back from his injury? Is is he looking like somebody who might yeah. get a few carries, or is or is he kind of mm-hmm. lost in the mix? Yeah, well, you know, he's 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 out there. I mean, you know, in, in our brief, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minute period of viewing this past Friday, I was paying attention to the running backs because that's really the number one position, the biggest question mark on offense. And, you know, he's he, he's definitely in the mix. He's probably, you know, if this is to be trusted, the way the way they go through drills in a certain order to me, it appears he is fourth string right now. I don't know if that's confirmed okay. or official, just because they were going, you know, R.J. Harvey was always the first guy getting reps with the first team. Then it was Bowser. Then it was uh, Johnny Richardson. And the fourth guy was just Trillian Cole. So he appears to be fully fully healthy. He's, he's, he was looking pretty fast out there. Yeah, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how this – you know, kind of develops with Mark Anthony Richards because I, I know we were, we have been looking forward to seeing him play and and you know ha- has a possibility of being a lead back role that um, we were looking for coming over from Auburn. So it will be interesting to see. Hopefully, hopefully he's not too banged up. Um, it's hopefully it's nothing serious and he can get practicing with the team soon. Yeah, I, you know, I I know he has been rehabbing some sort of sort of injury. I'm not entirely clear of of, of what that is. It's some lingering thing he had from Auburn because he really you know looked good. He was I think last year at Auburn he was kind of hampered early. He may have been one of those early COVID guys that you know was out for a few weeks because of COVID and, and had to kind of deal with that and kind of get back into the mix. So he had some really good games. I remember when he transferred, I was going back and watching you new know, clips of that Alabama game they played. He had some nice carries there. So I know a lot of people were excited to see him play and you know maybe we'll have some, some clarity later this week of you know when exactly he's gonna gonna be out there. I heard that that I heard that he's close, but he's just not ready to be out there quite yet. 
I had kind of penciled him in already as the starter mm-hmm. personally. Uh, so even with Bentavius on the roster, just personally, I thought that maybe he could make a little bit more of an impact. So hopefully he gets uh, whatever his issue is together uh, as soon as possible because it's coming up really quick. Uh, one of the other things that uh, I, I just wanted to ask you, since you've been out there to see like 15 minutes of practice or whatever, is there anybody physically that just stands out to, at, at you when you're out there just, you know, that you saw and you're like, man, this guy's a lot bigger or, or smaller than I thought he was. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, really, I, I guess I haven't seen a whole lot, but you know, we were just talking about him. Isaiah Bowser playing running back. He's definitely a guy that kind of, Stands out when you look at, at the other running backs. Uh, uh, Brandon Johnson, uh, he's a wide receiver transfer. Uh, he was here in the spring transfer from Tennessee. For all the talk about transfers that came since Gus arrived, I think he was the only one that actually came during the Hypo era. Uh, he enrolled uh, in January, and he's kind of give you know UCF a slightly bigger you know wide receiver option that you know they don't really have a lot of right now. He's about six two, six three, somewhere in that range. Um, you know, he's, he's someone that that's kind of stood out very early. He'll probably be in that, that top two or three mix at, at wide receiver this season. All right. Well, there are definitely a lot of questions to get answered, uh, even with, you know, less than, I don't know. I don't even know how many days I, I've normally had the countdown here of how many days it is <laughs> till football starts on September 2nd. And I can't do math while I'm trying to do radio. So. We're definitely three and a three half and weeks half week. under that. <laughs> three and a half three weeks. And a half there week. you go. That'll That's work. That's the easy way to say it. During the break, <laughs> I'll, I'll find out the exact number of minutes and hours and all that because I've been doing that for a while. Uh, I just wasn't ready this time. Uh, but, yeah, there there's so many questions that, honestly, we had questions before, but now it seems like as – you know, it gets closer. And as we start camp, there's been an, a couple of more questions that have arisen. So that's, that kind of, that's a little bit scary in a way, just because we thought we had some answers. I mean, in our heads anyway, we haven't heard anything from them, but we thought we kind of knew how things were going to fit together. Uh, and then now, it, it, you know, there's kind of a, a stick thrown in the wheel. All righty. We shall be back in just a minute right after this commercial break. Back on Nightline at Night. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave his family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO, 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. This is Andrew Fegley live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw. Got Big Ben Stout here with me on the phone. We have Brandon Helwig from UCFSports.com the guy with uh, his finger on the pulse of Night Nation, absolutely for sure. So, uh, Ben, why don't you start this uh, little segment off with a question for Brandon? Yeah, absolutely. We just we just talked about there being a little tad bit of uncertainty here. Uh, just just, and I think that's mainly stemming from we had we've had a lot of transfers that we expect to impact, uh, but uh, impact the team pretty positively. But um, seems to be behind 
behind uh, Jalen Robinson uh, on the wide receiver, you know, unit, it just seems seems to be, you know, who's going to fill that role of the number two receiver or just be in the mix, be a big contributor. So I know that you haven't seen much of the practices yet, but um, behind Jalen Robinson, who seems to be the clear number one receiver uh, in this offense um, moving, you know, moving into this season, uh, we just mentioned Brandon Johnson. Uh, I mean, so there, there's obviously a lot of names in that room. So um, what do you think maybe make an impact? What will make a big impact on uh, the wide receiver core? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, that's a, that is a big question mark going forward because, you know, I think everyone knows about, you know, Jalen Robinson, a.k.a. Flash. You know, I'm pretty sure he's going to be UCF's number one target. But beyond that, uh, we're not really sure. Like you mentioned it, Brandon Johnson, I think he's in his sixth year playing college football, plays five years at Tennessee, and this will be his sixth year at UCF. He's an experienced guy. I'm sure he'll be in the rotation uh, at, at some point. Um, Ryan O'Keefe. Uh, he's a guy who's been at UCF for for a few years. If people remember, um, God, what was it, like 95 yards? Or he had a 95-yard touchdown reception in, in that Memphis game last year, uh, so, something like that, showing off his speed a little bit on a, uh, on, on a screen pass, pretty much went almost the in, entire entire distance of the field. Uh, he's definitely probably going to be in that top, you know, three, four, five mix. And, and then beyond that, it'll be kind of interesting to see who, who emerges. You've got – Amari Johnson, he's been in the program a few years. You've got, you know, a couple of transfers to think about. You got uh, Jordan Johnson. Uh, he was, you know, one of the many uh, summer transfers for Gus. He, he played at Notre Dame, a former five star player uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, played at Notre Dame last year. Uh, I've heard some good things early on about him. I, I'm sure he'll be a factor somewhere. And you've got Nate Craig Myers who uh, played for Gus a little while ago at Auburn, and then he got transferred to Colorado State, and now he's back at UCF. Or I think it's going to be his like, six-year playing college football, just like Brandon Johnson. He's a bigger guy, 6'2", 6'3". And then there's some, some junior college players that you know UCF had here during springtime. They had you know, another Jalen, but this one's Jalen Griffin. They have Caden Robinson. You know, we did see some practices, some some scrimmages this past spring, and those guys, you know, had some 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 good days out there. So, yeah, that's that's the, other than running back, you know, that's probably the biggest thing is is who's going to kind of step up at a receiver beyond Jalen Robinson. Yeah, it just seems it just seems so wide open. I mean, we I mean, even even with the freshman, um, you know, from Hawaii coming in here, Titus, uh, Titus is is one of the names that we're excited about to see, and and even uh, transfer that kind of occurred late last season, um, Deontay Marks, uh, who right. you know, used to play at Florida. I mean, there's there's it just seems kind of wide open behind Flash and and maybe Ryan O'Keefe. Um, so it's it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that unit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the many questions, obviously, that we have. We're almost uh, coming up on a break here fairly quickly, so I'm not going to ask another question. Uh, I'll just talk here for a second. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. By the way, I found the uh, the numbers that we were looking for earlier. 25 right. days, 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 34 seconds, uh, just so you know, until UCF football starts September 2nd at uh, 7 p.m. at the bounce house against uh, Boise State, which should be a heck of a game. I know that they're getting hyped up for it uh, out there in some of their media stuff. I've seen, you know, some players on Twitter and, and some quotes and stuff like that, so they're getting excited as well. All right, we'll be right back after this break on Nightland and Night. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have 
everything from wild to mild in there. Absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain? Or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. And now... Back to Nightline at Night on WDVO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law, assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, or visit ProtectingVets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. We're taking your calls, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326, or you can use the open mic feature on the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley, got Big Ben Stout here with me. Uh, you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. Got also have uh, Brandon Helwig from UCFSports.com with us. Uh, Brandon, real quickly here, uh, I want to get in a little bit to this whole conference realignment thing because this is another thing that has been thrown at us right uh, at the beginning of football season or, or right before football season starts. Uh Oklahoma and Texas both moving from the Big 12 to the SEC in a couple of years. And I know that that UCF could easily be affected by this. Where do you think that things stand right now? I know that that it's not moving very much right now, but but there's rumors out there and and everything else with it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable. I mean, no one really saw this coming. I mean, everyone kind of figured at some some point, sometime in the future, that it, you know, it was not out of the realm of possibility that Texas and Oklahoma would look for greener pastures, whether that was SEC, Big Ten, or what have you. But the timing of it, I think, threw everyone, caught everyone off guard. Uh, so that was uh, a pretty much shocking thing that we weren't expecting in the past few weeks. And you know, obviously, it'd been in the works for like six months, and and there wasn't a. a uh, you know, a blip from anybody. No one really knew it was happening. So, so with with UCF, uh, and then, of course, then there was the story how you know the American was reaching out to the leftover Big Twelve teams. That was another crazy story too. But for UCF, right I would now, hope, I would hope that they would be though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I would hope that Mike Oresco was doing his job and and absolutely reaching out to them. Yeah, yeah, and and which is, I mean, we could probably talk to the rest of the show about that. But, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think right now, I think the biggest thing is really for these Big 12 schools to kind of, once the shock wears off of what happened and the anger and resentment and, and then just coming to, to reality. Uh, you know, I think I think it was the Iowa State Athletic Director uh, a few years ago made a very uh, candid comment, which, you know, is totally true, but would be surprising for someone in his position to make. He basically said, quote, if you take Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12, we are basically the Mountain West. Okay, so he was basically saying, you know, if we take our biggest brands out of our conference, if you talk about the value of who's left, we're basically a group of five conferences, really what he was saying. 
Absolutely so, true. You know, and which is which is which is true. So that's kind of you know reality has to sit in. You know, where are we, and and what's our value, and and what do we need to do to stay viable? I think for a lot of these teams. You know, they're hoping, praying, they're thinking, you know, oh, yeah, you know, we're we're attractive. We're going to get picked up by the Pac-12. They're going to want us. Maybe the ACC is going to want us. Maybe the Big Ten is going to want us if we're Kansas or someone. And and I'm not really true. I'm not really sure that's really going to be reality for for most of these schools, if if any of them. And so I think that's kind of where we're at right now with some of these schools, just trying to see do will would they have potential options in other Power Five leagues, and then. Beyond that, when are Texas and Oklahoma, when are they actually leaving? I know the the legal stuff out there, they're acting like they're going to remain in there through the end of the TV contract through, you know, 24-25 season, which, you know, no one believes that's, that's going to happen. The only question is, can they find a way to leave beginning next year or would they be in the Big 12 an additional year beyond this, this season? So, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, you know, if they're out of there pretty much after this year, you know, they're kind of screwed the rest of the Big 12. They have, they'd have eight teams left. They don't, that would only give them seven conference games. They'd be, they would be struggling just to put together a schedule. So if that happens, they have to backfill pretty fast. And, you know, obviously the top candidates would be, you know, a UCF, a Cincinnati, potentially Houston, BYU, South Florida, Memphis. That, that's kind of going to be your, your top teams. And, you know, I would I would tend to think UCF's probably at the top or very near the top of any you know potential you know expansion candidate list, and you know even even if they are, then there's then there's the ESPN thing that I brought into how you know the American and ESPN, you know, um, you don't want to defy ESPN and Commissioner of the Big Twelve recently sent a cease and desist and was kind of talking tough against you know the 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 major entity that pretty much controls and runs all of college football which is ESPN they own all the top TV rights now they're going to own they own TV rights to the playoff the the the, the future playoff whenever that gets finalized and do you want to defy ESPN and potentially run off to a league that may be quote unquote power 5 status right now you don't really know what the status of that is in in the future and would you maybe be running to join a conference that won't have any ESPN coverage you know beyond 24, 25. So that's kind of a risk. And there's a lot of question marks with all that stuff going on right now. Yeah. I'm very familiar with the big 12, the big eight before that. Uh, and I've been saying all along since this whole thing started that, that Texas and Oklahoma leaving the big 12 would be the total demise of the big 12. I personally think that they're not going to be satisfied with a, uh, a mountain West quote unquote, uh, scenario for them. And, and I don't know what happens. I mean, I don't think that, that a, a conference like that could or should have a automatic qualifying position like, like they, they have currently if the, the content is so low. Uh, and I'm not sure if UCF would want to get involved in something like that. I, I mean, I'm, I personally am rooting for Mike Oresco to really step up and, and be the savior in this situation for the American mm-hmm. and bring some teams from the Big 12 into the American to fill some spots that we have and make the American yeah. that power five, that power six that we've always wanted to be. This is the perfect time yeah. to do that. I mean, that would be good. It's just the American, you know, they have 11 teams right now. It's kind of unwieldy. There's eight leftovers. You know, it's 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 probably easier from a numbers standpoint because, I, you know, I would, you know, I don't think anyone would argue with me. The teams left over in the Big 12 are really way more valuable than most of the teams in the AAC, except maybe for UCF, Cincinnati, Houston. So you take your the, the, the cream of the crop of the AAC and you add it to the Big 12. Well, that, that, that that's a pretty good conference. It's just, you know, making the TV, you know, part of it work and, and everything else. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's going to be, you know, I know the season will be starting here in three and a half weeks, but there may be, you know, a more crazy conference realignment, whether it's just AAC, Big 12, potentially, you know, I don't know what else could happen. But, yeah, we're going to go through some some crazy stuff, I think, this uh, this fall as far as that goes. Just weird with the timing as far as I'm concerned with all of this. Uh, this was just a very odd timing situation for everything. So so just for UCF, in the off season, we've had our athletic director leave. We've had our head football coach leave. And then miraculously, we got Gus Malzahn. Then there's the the uh, NIL thing uh, with the players being able to get paid. And then there was a playoff scenario where it maybe moves to 12 that we still haven't heard of. And it's not final yet. And then this. 
that's just a yeah, really I odd. I, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that, <laughs> that same, you know, timeline of events since the season <laughs> ended. It's absolutely crazy. You know, it's absolutely nuts for all that stuff to be happening. And, you know, it's wild. You know, we even talked about it, half those topics. But, I mean, yeah, it's been a very eventful off off season for college football, but particularly UCF. Yeah, the world of college football, it's changing in front of our eyes uh, in more ways than one. Like, if, if there was just a little conference realignment thing happening, that would be one thing. But with the NIL stuff, the name, image, likeness, and everything else that's going on. Um, I just, you know, and then the SEC possibly, you know, or, or maybe even some of the other conferences becoming super conferences if they have so many teams in them. I mean, it's just the whole thing is going to be in five or ten years that you won't even be able to recognize any of college football, I don't think. Ben, you got anything here? Yeah, I was just going to say those last thing, last two things you mentioned as far as, like, that timeline that you laid out. I mean, it's a the – Seeing the potential, or or it seems like it's going to be inevitable, uh, college football playoff expansion to twelve teams, um, or or some form of that, it is kind of interesting to see conference realignment fall in that timeline right after that, uh, because it almost seemed like that was going to not necessarily prevent, but kind of discourage. Um, these conferences uh, where, where they almost didn't need to to align, um, you know, further or, or, or kind of like mix it up even further. But then again, an SEC, the most valuable when it comes to TV contracts, the most valuable, you know, conference in America um, joining, you know, having two teams that have an extreme, you know, high high end brand in Texas and Oklahoma. That just means that the rich just get that much richer. Right. And so I agree with what you guys said too, about the big 12. I mean, it just with eight teams, um, not huge brands. It seems like a would be able to lure, you know, three of those, at least three of those teams to try to make a 14 team conference. And the, the allure, I, I think that the American would have to like, a just to pick names out of the hat, you know, the, some, some Texas and Oklahoma teams like Baylor, Texas tech and Oklahoma state say, uh, I mean the, the lure, I think that a or the pitch that a could do there is, is simply what we have in the American is, is large TV, you know, uh, markets. And we have some, uh, with, with the two Florida teams, especially, we have a very fertile recruiting grounds, you know? So, uh, I mean, th- those are, those are two big things that the American has going for them that I think would be attractive to a few of those big 12 teams that are now down to eight, um, eventually. So it, it will be interesting to see how, how that further aligns. Uh, but usually, but it, again, the, the example of it only takes two, teams that are powerhouse brands to kind of make a big move like that and all of a sudden everything starts to shake up i mean we saw that several years ago obviously when you know the conference realignment happened um that led to the formation of the american so it's very interesting yeah i think west virginia as well would be uh, kind of a perfect fit in the american where they sit like where they're at uh, geographically agreed. Yeah. Um, that, that one's it, interesting. Cause it's never like has it made would... sense in the big 12 personally. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, West Virginia has never made sense in the big 12. I, I think West Virginia seems to be, you know, uh, in that same region as the ACC. So it would be interesting to see if, if they're able to kind of make that jump. Um, it seems like the ACC would be a, a, a big target for them, but yeah, it could be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon, real quick, we're coming up on a break here in like another minute. You got anything to add to that? Yeah, it's just the, the thing that's, that's always just hard for these programs to get over is that, you know, two or three weeks ago, they thought they were high and mighty. Hey, we're in a power five conference. You know, our, our schools are making $40 million a year in TV revenue. We're really big time. And it's going to be hard for these, for these schools to kind of, you know, bite their tongue or, or you know, swallow their pride and say, oh, all of a sudden we're joining the American, which is not a Power Five conference. And, and that's why you know, I have a hard time kind of seeing, you know, the transition go that way. You know, schools go from the Big 12 to the American. That's why it's probably more likely schools go from the American to the remaining Big 12. It's just there's so many questions about, you know, future TV contract and all that. 
You know, but, you know, like I said, if it's the Pac-12 or Big Ten or they pluck away a few of those remaining Big 12 schools, I think maybe there's a better chance of, a, a you know, Big 12 going over to the AAC then. But I think it's really going to be hard for those programs to, to swallow their pride and, and, and willingly sign up to be a, in a G5 conference. All right, got to take a break here. We'll be right back on Nightline at Night. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Welcome. This is a promo for the Take a Left at Albuquerque podcast new to the Nightline Sports Network. You should listen to it. I say things like this. We need to stop blaming Jerry because we would do the exact same thing if we owned the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Do you know how much fun it is to own the Dallas Cowboys? My guests will say things sometimes like uh, this. It's, it's the Lord of the Flies thing that happens when they don't understand that things are wrong spoiler alert until piggy dies yeah, um the lord I, of the flies has been out for like if, like 100 years it, like, it, i don't it, even know yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry sorry to everyone at home yeah. who i spoiled the book for a book's been out for like 90 years or something and sometimes rarely though i'll say really stupid things like this if they don't make it out of the west and the raptors get to the finals I will go on either this show or whoever show and say that Kawhi Leonard is overrated I just cuz i have too much evidence of it New episodes drop every Friday with me and some of my good friends right here on the Nightline Sports Network. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barla. I'm Andrew Fegley. Uh, I want to thank our guest that we've had throughout the entire hour today, Brandon Helwig, UCFSports.com. Uh, Brandon, for the people that are listening that may not know uh, what you do and what is at uh, UCFSports.com, please let them hear about that real quick. Yeah, well, yeah, I've been a longtime publisher of UCFSports.com, which is part of the Rivals.com network. You can obviously find me at that URL or uh, UCF Sports on Twitter. Uh, you know, daily stories, interviews with you know players, coaches. There's a large active message board called the Dungeon. You can get on. So, uh, would would love to have you come join us. All righty, it is. Uh, I mean, if you're a Knights fan and you're not on that uh, UCFSports.com and uh, you're not in the dungeon, you don't get the stuff that that uh, that we get in there. So, uh, Brandon, you have been an absolute help to us uh, from for every step of the way, man. And I, I appreciate you being on today, and I'm honored to have you on the first, uh, the next uh, incarnation of Nightline at Night. I appreciate it. Always enjoy it. I think I was one of your very first guests on your traditional podcast many years ago. So I'm always honored and, and, and very excited to join you with whatever in, in, incarnation or format you're on. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. <laughs> Thank you very much. We got one more thing coming Thanks, up Brian. here. We got to get going, and it's the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Welcome to the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Visit TijuanaFlats.com for takeout or delivery, or visit your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. Ben, have you tried the new cilantro lime rice that they have at Tijuana Flats yet? You know what? I have not. I definitely got to get on that, though. It is that sounds awesome. Delicious. It is awesome. Uh, it adds to whatever it is that you have there at Tijuana Flats. Everything is awesome on the menu. That queso, oh, my goodness. Uh, but, so good. uh, yeah, the cilantro uh, lime rice is awesome as well. So get out there and try that. Ben, you got a hot take? Uh, yes, I'm going to – I'm gonna. Uh, focus in on the wide receiver group. We talked a lot about that uh, today with Brandon. And while while certainly I think Flash Robinson is going to be that number one receiver, I'm not necessarily, uh, and I, I think he's going to lead the team in receptions. Um, 
I, I think the number two receiver, not maybe not number two as far as like the wide out, maybe, maybe play slot, but I think the guy that's going to be second in receptions on the team is going to be Ryan O'Keefe. I just think with his skill set and his and his uh, speed, especially, I, I think he's poised to have a breakout season. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna say second in receptions on the team is going to be Ryan O'Keefe, right behind Flash there. Okay. All right, we can, uh, you know, that works. What about our <laughs> our four star uh, Hawaiian wide receiver that we have, though? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to, to see Titus. Um, I, I still can't really fully pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try. But I, I'm, sur- <laughs> I'm su- <laughs> I was trying I, to get you to try. I'm super excited to see him. I mean, when we get a four star guy, uh, his tape in high school just looked looked really impressive. So. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how he progresses in fall camp and gets in the mix. I think he'll he'll be a guy that certainly gets some um, gets some play this year. Uh, but, but we have a lot of different options at wide receiver. That's a really interesting group. I don't know if, if these see. numbers are correct on the uh, 2021 uh, football roster on UCFKnights.com, which is their official website. But it looks like he's maybe wearing the number zero. Titus, is. yeah. That's, That's interesting for a wide like receiver. Yeah, that is interesting to see that. So, um, And the defensive yeah. back as well wearing the number zero. So hopefully he does not turn out to be a zero and he turns out to be a hero. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, we don't need any zero stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> not a good thing. Okay, uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week on Nightline at Night in our new time slot. We will be back next week, same time, same place. Uh, Go Knights. Charge on.